To see some of the raw power of Photoshop, I'm going to start in Adobe Bridge and we're going to build a panoramic, then let Photoshop add new image data and remove image data. So I'm going to click once on any image in this folder and hit H or HO for the Hobart building here in San Francisco. I'm going to select all four images. But before I do, I took this shot of the bottom of the building, then single shots as my camera panned up. I could have stopped on this one, but it was such a gorgeous blue day that I really wanted to get more of the sky in there. And also to convey that I was a little person standing down taking this shot, I wanted to get the top of this pole in the image. So I'm going to use Shift to select from 4 to 1, because 4 was the last image selected. Or you can click on Hobart Building 1, then Shift click on Hobart Building 4. I'll choose Tools, Photoshop, and Photo Merge, one of my favorites. And I'll click OK on the defaults and let it work its magic. Now I'm going to maximize Photoshop to fill my screen. And I notice it's a little bit crooked. But when I hit C for the Crop Tool or click the Crop Tool, I can actually straighten it as I crop. So I'm going to pull in a bit, trying to keep most of the sky. If the Crop Tool is jumping on me, I can hold down the Control key, and it is Control on both platforms, not the command that we normally use on the Mac, but Control, as you're dragging, will prevent that snapping from happening. I'll drag this side in a bit, but I want to keep some of this building. Even though there's no image data there, I'm going to trust that Photoshop will make it up for me. If I move anywhere to the outside, I can rotate. And when I rotate, I want to line the bottom of the photo up with the straight bottom of the crop area. And then I'll fine tune it. Remembering that if it's jumping too far, I can hold down control to do a more precise cropping. I really love days with the rich blue sky and I attempt to keep as much of that sky in my shots as I can. I can actually hit this check mark to accept the crop, and the cropping is done, but there's a lot of empty image territory here. And I'm going to do one more quick crop, because there's a hair on the bottom that I want to get rid of. Holding down Control to do a very subtle move and not snap. Return or Enter will also accept my crop. And I don't need to keep all four of these layers. I could Shift click again to see the blending and scaling that happened on each layer mask. But I'm simply going to choose Layer, Flatten Image. And I've got a much more reasonable file size, just under 7 megs. Now, if you look at your Tools panel, Underneath the Quick Selection tool, if you click and hold for two seconds, you'll see the Magic Wand tool. Or Right Click will also bring it up. When I select the Magic Wand, I'm going to click once on the white area at the top. Now this detail is a bit blown out, so let's see if I can get only the white. If this is too white because the sun is shining directly on it, I'll let it be included. So I'll choose Select, Deselect, and on the magic wand, I can lower my tolerance to 1. Grab one color level, just the white, and I'll click once again. So a little bit of this white creeped in, but I'm going to let it go. And I'll choose Select, Modify, Expand by 10 pixels. 10 seems to be a good magic number for me. And then I'll choose Edit, Fill. Leave it on the default Content Aware and click OK. And it actually made up New Sky. I'll choose Select, Deselect, and I won't worry about this extra pole in there. We're going to get rid of it. So let's try this side. Click once on the white, select, 
Modify, Expand by 10, Edit, Fill, Content Aware, and click OK. Oh, it made up new building, it even got the shadow, it's beautiful. Now it's not 100% perfect, but I'm letting my perfectionism go just to show you really cool stuff. So, select, deselect, and now we'll try the very cool Spot Healing Brush. Spot Healing Brush would let me paint over this little piece that I don't want in the sky. It's so quickly, magically gone. It's amazing. I'm going to hit Command Plus or Control Plus a couple times to zoom in and scroll down. And a little bit of this flagpole was duplicated. So let's see if I could paint that away. Why, yes, I can. In fact, you can go right along seams and it will wipe them out all together. I'll undo that. And I would say if you wanted to keep this straight, really the clone stamp tool is the best way to do it. But I could get rid of the seam altogether if it's too much of a telltale. And no one but me will ever know. Just for fun, to finish this off, I could try going up into the sky and I'll make my brush size bigger and painting away this. Wow, it's completely gone. Let's go even bigger and see if we can wipe out this whole pole. With the spot healing brush, I tend to make the brush size bigger than the object I'm trying to remove. And it takes a little bit of a steady hand, which I don't always have. Unbelievable. This building did an excellent job. This could take me an hour with a clone stamp tool in the past. I'll size my brush down a little bit more, and I'm going to let some of this go because it's just for example, but I can try to paint away a little bit more. If you don't like what it did on the first try, just try painting in another direction. Oh my goodness. I'm going to let that one go because you probably won't notice it, but I could go straight across and try to wipe out or clean up these lines with the shading. If it does something I don't like, just undo and try it again. If left to right doesn't work, try right to left. And I use Control Z a lot. But if I fit in window, Control Zero, or view, fit on screen, this might just be a highlight. I could do more, but this is pretty astounding in the small amount of time it took me to stitch these four images together into one seamless panoramic and get the true scope and spans of a place by letting Photoshop add new sky or add new building and wipe out objects that are distracting to the shot. So collect some of your own images or grab your smartphone or camera and get out there and take shots of beautiful views, just leaving a little overlap in each shot so that Photoshop can stitch them together for you. Happy shooting!